I really encourage you to give some consideration to all the points I'm going to make before you spend your hard-earned cash on a new handbag. Everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Something a little different for me today. Uh, it's still very handbag related, don't worry, but I thought I would share uh, basically my guide to buying a new handbag and the whole thought process ahead of buying one. Now, I will be looking at the front, I made some notes earlier because I wanted to make sure I had everything in my head down. Um, Basically, my head goes 100 miles an hour and sometimes then stuff falls out. So, by having a little bit of structure, it's going to help. I've just got one little piece of eye candy here to um, brighten things up, although there is Miss Minnie Rooley in the background, um, just because she was used the other day and I haven't put her away yet. <laughs> because I want to film using her. Anyway, for those of you that haven't already, Tripod is literally limping on its last leg. Please subscribe. I can't, I can afford it, but I can't justify putting more into this channel without basically a little bit more recognition, a little bit more feeling of success. So please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the like button if you like this video. Um, or if you don't, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> and yeah, we'll get into it. The inspiration for this, I would like to say a massive thank you to the absolutely awesome Amelia from Amelia Rose's Closet because she did a recent video um, from a tag from Star by Gwynny about almost like bags that she wasn't using, you know, talking about if any bags were regrets. And it led me to thinking that there's a whole process that I go through to minimise, not eradicate, that problem. Um, it doesn't mean so it still doesn't happen. And I thought that I've probably hinted at bits throughout videos since forever I've been making them, but I haven't actually ever done a video where I've set it out as to the exact thought process that I go through. Now, you may watch this and you may come out, but if you stick for the end, you may think, wow, <laughs> wouldn't want to be inside her head. Um, yes, I am difficult to live with myself. But anyway, I'm gonna go through this. I really encourage you to give some consideration to all the points I'm gonna make before you spend your hard-earned cash on a new handbag. So here we go, here's my 12-step guide. Yes, that is a 12-step guide, didn't know how to do it then. Uh, that is a 12-step guide to buying a new handbag. Who would have thought it was so complex? So, step number one, can you afford it? And that is utmost. If the answer to that is no, then that's it. The rest of this is irrelevant. If you can't afford it, you can't have it, done. Um, so that is, that is the simplest step number one. Can you afford to buy it? Step number two is to consider, you know, what is your intention with this handbag? Is your intention to use it? Is it a collector's piece and you're buying it because you're a collector? Is it a bit of both? Because that also will help dictate whether you buy that bag or not, depending on your answers to the next steps that you go through. So I think you always, you need to have it clear in your mind what your expectations are for this bag. Now for me, largely, I'm a bag user. I don't buy my bags to sit on a shelf and be pretty. My house isn't big enough to have a display shelf. So mine are very well looked after, out of direct sunlight in their dust bags, but still with breathable air. Um, so that is a consideration for me. I buy my bags to use, so the rest of this is really relevant. And I will include some examples as I go through as well. So step number three, aesthetic appeal. Do you love it enough? How will you style it? Can you think of enough outfits that it will go with? Basically, if you don't like the look of the bag, don't buy it because you're not going to use it. It's kind of an easy one, this one. They get a little bit more complex as we go through. And you'll see that a lot of these are interdependent as well. So step number four, your type of use. So you like the look of the bag, fine, it's, it's past that. You can afford it, you think it looks pretty. How are you gonna use it? Do you wanna use it for work? Do you wanna use it to run errands? Do you wanna use it to go shopping? Do you wanna use it as an event bag? Do you want it for a particular wedding? Decide on how you want to use that bag. And then, once you know that, 
What's this capacity? For the use that you've decided that you want, how you want to use it, I and mean, your thought above then, and these are the outfits that I want to style it with. So for example, I want to use it for work. Would it go with my work outfits? Can I fit in enough that I need to take with me on a typical day to work? This is how the thought process goes. So you almost like do sometimes go back up the steps as well as you think through. Number five, your preferences. And I've fallen foul of this in the past. I've learned, believe it or not. <laughs> so do you like a structured bag? Or do you like a slouchy bag? Because I can tell you now, if you're like me and you like a structured bag and you buy a slouchy bag, that bag ain't going to last. You're not going to use it because it's going to annoy the crap out of you every time you want to just plop something out and it's gone into the slouchy corner and you can't find it. Been there, had a tantrum in the middle of the street where I can't find what I want. I know it's in there because I, I know what I put in and I know it's there. Um, but yeah, know, know yourself. I think with a lot of this, it's know yourself know your style, know what you want. That doesn't mean you can't go outside of your, your typical style if you want to, but do it knowingly. And I think that's the key with all of this. Six, season. So is there a particular season for which you intend to use this? Is it suitable for that? So again, that goes back to the style point. There's no point buying a bag that you think you want to use in summer. You think this is a brilliant summer bag and it goes in my winter coat and none of my summer outfit. There's no point going, well, I really want this bag for winter or autumn. Typically it rains, this is in England, you know, it rains at that season and I can't fit my umbrella in it. Again, that is going to impact your ability to use the bag. Going back to that other point in terms of step two, is your intention to use it or to collect it? So again, a lot of these are around the intention to use it. I think most of us do buy bags to use them. I think there's less of us that buy them to collect, in which case, you know, for a collector's piece, do you like it? Is it pretty? Is it statement? Is it unique? Is it an investment? Those are sorts of things that you can be worried about more, less about styling. So going on from that, material. And again, that's also link interlinked. But is the material durable enough for your needs so that you can use it with enjoyment? If you buy a bag and for your lifestyle, your approach to things, you know, say you have a bit of a clumsy approach, but you've actually like your stuff pristine. Don't buy box leather, basically. <laughs> because what that will do is that will give you an anxiety over using the bag. And then you won't use it. And if you've bought the bag to use, it's a waste of money. So it's those sorts of things. Like I say, it's a mixture of knowing the bag and knowing yourself and, and seeing if that is a good match. So is it durable enough for your needs so you can use it with enjoyment? Again, you know, say for example your use, so you, you've decided that you like this bag, you've decided that it goes with all your outfits, you want to use it to go down to the pub with, then your typical thing is that's a Friday night down the pub bag, these are all my Friday night outfits I'm going to wear it with, I can afford it, brilliant. It's a material textile bag and you like your stuff clean, it's not going to stay clean in a pub, people are going to spill red wine, people are going to spill beer. beer. It happens. So again, think about all of these things. Number eight, and this takes a bit more reflection and, and sometimes some research. Is there anything at all about that bag that is going to annoy you? For example, the way the zip goes. Has it got an annoying double flap? Do your research, so basically I suggest if you decide a bag and you, you, you're going through all these stages and so far you're like, yeah, this is going to be a winner, I'm going to go and buy it, it's going to be a winner. Do some YouTube research, there's loads of us out here that talk a lot about handbags. Do your research and find out what anyone's pet peeves are, what the cons are of that bag and then think about it in terms of you. What annoys one person may not annoy another, but if you have that awareness, then you can address it. So. I highly recommend doing bag research. It's how I found some of my favourite YouTubers, actually. Um, and people like Mel in Melbourne are great for that. They do really good in-depth reviews. I will pick out the flaws of a bag, you know, minx for all. There's a load of people that, that do that and do it really, really well and in-depth. So if you can sit there and watch it an in-depth video, then I really recommend doing that research and find them out and, and see, is this going to be a problem for you? Remember, a lot of this is down to personal choice. So just because somebody else really likes a bag, 
it doesn't mean that you do. You know, obviously buy for you, but it's good to have an awareness of all of the potential flaws so you can go, yeah, you know what? That will bother me. I remember Emma Anders talking about, I think it was a business infinity, a Chanel business infinity, and it flopping forward. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? That would annoy the crap out of me. Um, not a bag I'm interested in for other reasons, but mainly the aesthetic one. I don't dislike it, I just don't like it enough to spend Chanel money. Um, but it is that in addition to that would really annoy me. Step number nine, and this is a big one, competition. I've talked about this a lot on my channel, I know, but it really is vital. Um, what other competition to that bag is there already in your collection? Because potentially that will mean either you won't new, use your new bag or you won't use an existing one. So you need to be aware of that. You need to know, is there competition? Is it that you've got competition between two tote bags, but actually use a tote bag all the time? So therefore it's not a problem, it just means one gets a little bit of a rest. Or have you got two event bags that you use once in a blue moon and you know that this new bag you won't use because the other one you prefer so much more. So you love it, you can see how you'd style it, but it's just not gonna get its cost per wear and that means something to you. Again, that's gonna be a reason not to buy it. Have you already got six other pink bags? Why are you going to use pink bag number seven then? So think about all of all of this. Um, you know what you what will make this one stand out on the shelf. You know, or is it just going to sit there unused? Or maybe you know what you can see the competition, but you like the new bag more, and actually your intent is then to sell the existing one. Great, that's okay. But just be aware. I think with all of this. Go into it with your eyes wide open. Go into it knowing what you're doing. Number 10, resale value. Now, I don't buy bags to resell them, so that's not what I'm talking about here, and I generally don't believe that handbags are good investments. There is exceptions, and there's, and if you keep on to a Chanel Classic flat for long enough, but it's, it's not something, it's not my motivation. However, it is something that I'm aware of, and that's basically from this perspective. If the absolute worst happens, so you go through all those above steps, and you buy the bag, but you realise you've made a mistake. So think about it beforehand in terms of if you make that mistake, how popular is what you've just bought? Is it a current trend and is it sought after? Is the designer, you know, is the actual design of the bag well um, sought after or is it really unpopular you like it but no one else will or it's a weird colour or what about the brand itself so you know for example if you buy an Hermes bag it's more likely that you can sell that on afterwards without making a loss versus for example if you buy a dual bag now dual bags are beautiful they're lovely quality and they're expensive coupled with that they do not hold their value they really don't. So, you know, they're a really prime example of expensive to buy, cheap to sell. Um, so have that in mind because then that does, for me, I just think that that helps it take how seriously you take some of the above steps. So for me, when I bought my first Birkin, it was a really massive deal. I'd never spent that much on a handbag in my life. It was a big deal. I'm buying an Hermes Birkin. It's my first Hermes bag. It's, Again, once you do want something once, it becomes easier. Um, but it was a big, big step for me. And logical me almost thought, well, if you say no to this, it's your, you've wanted this colour, it's perfect for what you want, it's an amazing opportunity that you didn't ever think was going to happen. If you don't buy it, there will definitely be regrets. What's the worst that can happen if you do buy it? And I thought the worst that happens if I buy this Birkin and I decide afterwards, oh my God, what have I done? I can't live with this. I can't spend that much on a bag. I knew that I'd be able to sell it on. You know, here's a brand new Birkin for sale. Who's not going to buy it for me for, for more than retail, you know? But worst case scenario was that. So it was handy to have that in mind was my point. So that was genuinely a thought process that I did go through. Um, it passed all the other tests I just it was just a bit overwhelming because it's such a big deal for me so yeah 
Um, also think about the pre-loved versus the new market as well in terms of value because typically if you buy on the pre-loved market, that depreciation has already happened. It's a bit like buying cars. That depreciation has already happened. So again, if you do make a mistake and you think, oh, I want to sell it, you're mitigating. You may not all be getting necessarily all your money back, but you're mitigating the potential to lose so much. So again, it's just a consideration in terms of how definite you are over the bag, having gone through all the other steps. Step number 11, buy the bag and enjoy it. Just enjoy it. You've worked hard for it, you've bought yourself this bag, it's beautiful, it goes with your outfits, it carries what you want, enjoy her. Let her fulfil her handbag destiny and go out and about and be used. You might think that'd be it, but there's not. I've put a 12th step in here. Review. So in, in six months, in a year, review that bag, review how much, and that's why sometimes these tag videos are great for doing that. But was that a good buy? Can I learn from that experience? It doesn't necessarily mean that that bag was a mistake and you want to sell it, but what's your collection looking like? Is it nice and rounded? Have you got a gap? You know, review your collection as a whole. Review that last bag that you bought and how it fits in and what you th how you think it's going. Um, I've got an example here. This is my new... Pachette Matisse East West in the monoglam. Um, already I'm thinking to myself, how good a buy was this? And the answer is the damn good one. Uh, it does fit in with my lifestyle very well. It doesn't fit in with this top. That's okay, I'll wear a different top. I've got other bags I can wear with this top. It's not a problem. Uh, but yeah, generally, this was a good buy. The capacity, the durability, the aesthetics, everything comes together for this. Yes, it was expensive for what it is, but it wasn't a stupid amount of money compared to what handbags can be. Like I said, that's a big caveat. Um, so yeah. Some of the other points I wanted to make, that's all the stages, but some of the other points I wanted to make just in terms of this, is that this is just about giving good consideration to try and minimise an expensive mistake. You can't eradicate it completely because <laughs> sometimes you just can't really get to know a bag properly until you have it, you know? It falls over, it's got a dodgy clasp, whatever it may be, it randomly opens as you walk along. Yes, I had that, a Chanel maxi bag that I bought, I actually then took it to Chanel and they fixed it for free and it doesn't do it anymore. So, <laughs> some things you can get over, but some things, you know, buying that pre-loved, I had, or even knew, I had no idea it was going to do that. Um, but, and I'd say as well, typically bags aren't financial investments. Uh, there are exceptions, you know, for example, um, as I mentioned already, Hermes, you know, you can make money on those. I don't like it when people make money on those. I think well, someone could have bought that brand new from the store and given it the love that it wanted. But anyway, I, I, I get that there is a market for it. Um, and I will say there's no real waiting behind the above, you know. Sometimes our heart does just roll over our head. Sometimes, you know, for example, my my... Kelly 32, uh, which is the Cellier in box leather with gold hardware. For me, it is the epitome of an Hermes Kelly. The collector inside me went for that. I have used it. She is lightweight. She does creak a bit when she opens. That's normal. Uh, she's not the easiest to get in and out of, and I'm quite scared to use her. But the collector in me really want that, and then the practical me is forcing myself to use her and not worry about it. I look at some box out of Kelly's at like 70 years old and still look great, so I'm going to copy that delicate. Um, anyway, it doesn't mean that that's a mistake, but I recognise it and I, I work around it. And it's like I say, it's just the one bag, it's not it's not typical of my whole collection. Um, and this bag, I was going to say, this, is, this bag here is an example that impulse isn't necessarily wrong. Some of the best bags can be unplanned. Um, I went to store, I liked this online, but I went to store to buy myself a Neverfull because I thought going through all of those steps that the Neverfull was the more practical choice for me. And I got there and they had both, so I had it, but it wasn't like they didn't have it and it wasn't like I bought this because they didn't have what I wanted. No, and I never do that. I just loved this more. 
But to make sure I wasn't making a mistake, I got them to put it on hold for me at lunchtime. I spent the rest of the afternoon just letting it swim around the back of my head whilst I did work. I was working. Uh, and then I went back and bought it and absolutely no regrets. You know, on the walk there, I went back for those steps in my head and I was like, no, absolutely, this is the right choice for you. And it's worked out really well. There's some never full news coming. Um, but that's for another video. Um, so it worked out absolutely for the best. But yeah, some of the best bags, and this is one of those, absolutely can be unplanned. There can also be mistakes, but like I say, if you follow these steps, I think you're really going to save yourself some handbag heartaches and wasted money. But I just want to say as well that if you buy a bag and you use it absolutely loads for five years, say, I'm making this up, but, and then you decide that the bag just sits on the shelf and you don't use it and you've got other bags that you prefer, you, your taste has changed, your style has evolved. You know, it does, even at my age, you know, our style evolves. I'm going through a bit of a Louis Vuitton phase at the moment. I just really like what their collection is as well as my taste evolves, so do the designers and what different brands are coming out, so you may be the same but they change. It doesn't mean that that bag that you bought five years ago was a mistake, it just means that you've moved on and you can then make that decision whether the sentiment in you wants to keep hold of it or you just sell it on and even if you sell at a loss you still had that enjoyment from that bag, it doesn't make it a regret, it doesn't make it a mistake. Um, like I say a lot of these, this and the 12 steps that I've given you are to really help make the most from your money, make the most of your handbag collection and your wardrobe and your lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite a lifestyle guru yet. Um, anyway, here's some eye candy and that's just with a bit of natural light. Um, do take care everybody. I hope you found that useful. I, sometimes it's just a case of stop, pause, question yourself, then hand over that credit card. That's it from me. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.